Hey, hey, hey. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Eric here from Eric here from African Art with Eric, and I hope you're all doing well. I'm going to play the song again to allow you to share this video and invite all your friends and family to join us as we talk about African art. How has been your day? I'm so happy to come your way this afternoon, and I hope you're so doing well. What I just showed is one of the art pieces that I'll be showing you quite shortly. But today I've got two very good artist friends of mine who originally are from Ghana, but are living in the UK with myself. So yes, if you want to hear more about what they do, their challenges, their processes, join me and stay on and invite a few more friends to join us. So I'm going to play that music again, but to allow you to invite all your friends. So stay charged. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome back to the show. So this is a show where we talk about all things African art. My name is Eric Amwapa Bwadu, and I'm so happy that you are here with me this afternoon. Saturday is 4 p.m. in the UK, 3 p.m. GMT, and wherever you are in this world, good afternoon. I hope you've had a wonderful day. You've had a wonderful day so far. Mine has been good. It's sunny in London, and I am praying that wherever you are, it's sunny as well. Today, as you well know, we are going to talk about everything African art and what can we I start with than a bit of education about African art, about our culture, about what we do. The purpose of this show is to just reiterate the fact that artists in Africa are always creating something new. Our works are authentic and we have that spiritual aspect to it, which makes it very unique. That is why for the past, let's say, 30, 10 years, our works have been on the rise. You know, demand for African art has been on the rise around the whole world. So I'm going to talk about uh, some of the things that we do that makes our work unique. And way back in 1810 to about 1819, let me just get my facts right, 1820 actually, there was a king named um, Ken Nana Kojo Ajman Edinkra. And he actually invented these as the Dinkra symbols. And for the past seven weeks, I've been taking each symbol and talking a bit more about it. So these are the symbols over there and very beautiful symbols. These days, when you look all around the world, you find people using them for T-shirts, for earrings, for jewelry, for whatever you can think about. But today, the one that I've picked for us to talk about is this one. It is called Bwame, Namemwau. Bwame, Namemwau. Now, this language is in Chi from the Akan tribe in Ghana. And it says Bwame, Namemwau. 
Now, in English, it means help me and let me help you. That's a literal translation. Help me and let me help you. And what we're talking about is that as human beings, we should be helpful to each other. We should cooperate with each other. We should have that interdependency. We cannot live as an island on our own in this world. This symbol makes it known to us that we rely on each other to have a peaceful coexistence on this earth. Um, where we trade our skill sets, we trade our ideas, we make sure that we are all living in harmony and in peace. So way back in those days, the Akan people in Ghana were thinking about how they can actually collaborate, how they can live peacefully, how they can work interdependently. But these days, what we find, everybody wants to do their thing on their own. People just want to create and hide even their skill sets. They are not willing to share their processes or their methods because they think that others will copy them. No, creativity is so abundant that we should be able to just discuss how we even achieve our creative endeavors. Now, if you don't want to give too much away, obviously share the best that you want to share. But the point is that we need each other to be able to get to that place of success. So the symbol says, Buame, name mwau. It means help me and let me help you. That is our lesson for today on the Dinkra symbol. That was good, wasn't it? That was really good. So this means, Buame, name mwau. If I help you, you will also be helping me. There we go. That's our African lesson for today. Going straight to the program, because I can't keep my guests waiting. I've got two important guests of mine whom I revealed last week. And because it was so important that I carry on with the discussion with them, I brought them back this week so that we can talk about their journey as artists and also look at the challenges that we face as African artists. So without much ado, I'm going to bring Richard Mensa on. And hello, Richard. And I've also got Shalman Kwashi. Shalman is here as well. I'm just going to unmute them so that we can have a good conversation. Hello, amigos. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Hello, D. Yeah, like we did. Great. And like, all right. Great, great. So this week, we, we, we just pray that the internet will favor us and we know it will. And we're going to have a really brilliant discussion about African art. Last week, we talked about each individual's work. And I can see behind yourselves beautiful painting. And I'm also going to show the works that I showed last week so that those who weren't here with us will be able to catch up and know the kind of artworks that you do. Um, as a way of introduction, I'll give each one of you just a bit of time to tell us just a little bit about yourselves before we delve into your actual process. So I'll start with Shalman. Shalman, who is Shalman? Shalman is me. <laughs> and, and I like that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, on a serious note, uh, I come from obviously, um, I'm, I'm an African artist, that's why I call myself yeah. from Ghana. And um, I've been doing, I've been doing art as, uh, as far as I can remember, uh, from childhood. It used to be a lot of drawing and uh, coloring and uh, you know, yeah. and uh, and uh, a little bit of creativity, creativity here and there, okay. and uh, and then it became more like um, uh, it, it becomes more of a passion, yes, than just uh, than, than just um, every more than everything else in in, in, in wow. every in, in every in, in every aspect of my life. I, just, I, I growing up as a yes. child, I always. Um, had a dream of uh, drawing. I, I quite remember why I used to like drawing a lot was aeroplanes. I didn't know why, okay. why I used to like aeroplanes. Pro then, probably you were prophesying into coming <laughs> to the UK, maybe. You know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it, it, it all started that way, and then it became, it, it, and, and, and then it became something like um, uh, a process that I couldn't, I couldn't part with. Get away from. So, okay yeah yeah so and then obviously parents go worried whether uh they should they should encourage me to keep drawing or I have to stop drawing and start actually learning something yes. something they believe is proper for me 
So mm -hmm. uh, that was the beginning. And then with time, um, obviously, you get discouraged by your parents. I got discouraged so many times. And then I think that actually um, got me confused as well as to, okay. as to whether I should continue with that path because it's something I, I, I enjoy. And then I'm being led to do something else that I, did, I, I had no complete, I had no, um, no knowledge about. I didn't even know how other fields were because I was just, I just wanted to be an artist. Yes. I just, yes. you get, you get uh, I, I, along the line, you get to, uh, uh, obviously you have to listen, listen to your parents from, I mean, coming from Africa, you, you have yes. to go with your, your parents, uh, say to you and, and on and on, on until really, somehow I became an artist through all the um, through all the all the hardship and all the all the um, the refusal of uh, not not following some of the stuff your parents your parents would tell you to, 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 to tell, tell you to, to do <laughs> the they want you to follow but it, it's, it's sort of a mix. <laughs> it's sort of a mix mm. where you, mm. you you have to listen to them as well as you want to follow your passion. So that mixed child yes. continued for long until you become a man and you feel like you can do whatever you want now. You can actually follow your passion because you're not really fully under the umbrella of your That's parents true. anymore. <laughs> Even though you always be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think there's a lot of determination and, and perseverance <laughs> that went into your journey, isn't it? There was a lot of determination and yeah. perseverance yeah. that went into your journey, I suppose. Yes. Yes, yes, there was. So, um, I've acted from, I decided to be full-time artist. I made a, I made a choice that I want to be a full-time artist. And then, That's um, it. and I wanted to, to know how the art, how, um, the art industry, in fact, if I should call it that way, in Ghana, in Africa as a whole, yes. was. I started looking for um, Ghanaian artists that I, I, I can act to, I can, I can have, yeah. And, uh, with, mm. and I finally met, I finally went to Omanye House Artist Alliance. Okay. At, at the time, it was the biggest art gallery in West Africa, not just in Ghana. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so I went there and finally got to meet Glover and other artists at uh, Larry O2, uh, We School the Wall, and finally the one that I will call the guy here. Me, he met me. With time, I heard you. I worked with him for a bit, and then. Um, and I picked a lot from him. And if anybody knows who his work and see my work, they can see the relationship in, in, in uh, that's right, straight away in both ways. I can see that similarity. Uh, yeah, I was uh, at the, uh, so yeah. Then I think into and then I finally left. And when I was leaving, I I, I could quite remember Reese was Reese wasn't very happy about me leaving and uh, <laughs> leaving coming to the UK. He yes. was worried I was I was going to lose you all. But that's true. Uh, I, I stand in the, uh, yeah, and somehow I can call myself an artist. Great. I, know what I could have been. Who knows what, yes. what, what the place would have been in the future. So I could, I could, I just, I can just say that I'm happy. I, I still got this passion and I can still call myself an artist. Great, great, fantastic. So Shalman says he's happy that he stayed on and um, can still call himself an artist. Yeah. Richard, I'm coming to you now. Richard, who is Richard Mensa? Yeah, again, uh, thank you very much for having us back um, today. Um, so Richard is um, an artist, scientist, and engineer living in London now. Um, you know, I, 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 I choose to call myself um, 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 like a Ghanaian, so... <laughs> Even right. though I'm a, we are all Ghana, yeah. So um, yeah. So I'm married with three kids. Um, 
I think I've got a very similar story to um, Sham and, um, you know, like I've always um, been an art, you know, um, an artist, I've always drawn, sketched, painted, done everything um, as, um, you know, like growing up in Ghana. And That's right. um, like I moved like to the UK in the early 2000s. And I took, I began to really to like to take art seriously when I was, um, no, 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 that was just, I think, um, four or five years ago when my mom visited me, um, like in London. And, um, okay. you know, um, like asked me whether I could still paint because, um, like I stopped doing <laughs> art for a very, very long time. So I did, um, yeah. like a painting and she was like amazed that I could still paint, I could still draw. So, um, and that, you know, like began, um, like my arts or like my painting, you know, like Jenny again. So mm -hmm. I've been painting, I'm um, doing, um, um, like exhibition and like here and there, um, like within the like United like Kingdom. So that is, that is, that is just like a little bit, um, about me. Great. Great. Thank you so much. So there's a common trend here. Um, the fact that both of you didn't give up on your passion. And same applies to me. Um, I've been an artist all my life. And I stayed through foods. Very similar to what Shalman said, you know, and probably Richard relates to it as well. African parents all, always, let's say, push you towards the traditional subjects. And we talked about it last week. Yeah. But the lesson for us here is that this art thing is not um, just a it's not just a passion, it's a calling. That's how yeah. I, I, I see it as. So if you neglect it, it will haunt you for the rest of your life. Even when you sleep, you have images forming in your head. So yeah. these are certain yeah, symptoms that I'd like to be artists, you know, artists who are really called to this profession to bear in mind that as God has given you this talent and you cannot ignore it. You know, um, you will always, always be going back to your God-given talent. You can put it aside, but later down the line in your life, as Richard did, you will pick it up again. And as soon as you pick it up, because it's a natural talent, you will flow with it. So there's a question here from uh, one of my good artist friends, uh, Jonathan Quedri Agri. He says, Richard, did you grow up in a shaman? No, <laughs> I was... Um... <laughs> Um, I was born in Tema, but I spent most of my childhood in Kumasi. Um, okay. I, I don't. I don't even think I've been. I've been to Ashamai before. I think I've been. I've been like on the you know like peripheral like the boundaries, but I don't really think I've um, been in Ashamai um, before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, talking about where we grew up, I'll throw the same question to Shalman then. Where, where, where in Ghana did you actually grow up? Someone can hear us. I'm, I'm having this consistent break. Oh, okay. I'm going to. Should I just connect back to see if it gets better? I think we can hear you now. So let's let's carry on. Yeah, I'll do, I'll just do. That. Okay. Okay. So, in in terms of where 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 you grew up. I'm trying to form an opinion of the influence yeah. of where you grew up on on the work that you actually produce. Yeah, so yeah. where where in Ghana did you grow up? So I think, I think Shaman, yeah, yeah. Uh, whilst we're waiting for Shaman, um, I would Shaman maybe is having elaborate. A if you can reconnect, yeah, Shaman, I'm going to remove you now. If you reconnect, that would be great. So Richard, yeah. let's go back to the influence of where you grew up on your yeah. on your art. I think it's 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 quite a strange one. Um, like I grew up in Kumasi, but born okay. in Tema. But I think when I was growing up, um, I I, I heard someone saying that he loved drawing um like airplanes. To be honest with you, I I I you know I love creating things. And okay, I I, I let me just tell you like this like story. I think that form the basis. Like in growing up, um, the influence to me was creating figures like at that right. time i don't know whether like you like you know i'm like remember hindi like movies or the indian yes. like bollywood was, was quite big that was really <laughs> heavy on ghana wasn't it <laughs> exactly um bollywood uh, like bollywood wood was quite big so i remember what i used to do was that i i always attempted to draw um 
this good guys i don't know whether like you know um um uh, shaka and diwa shaka and diwa yes i used to <laughs> try my very best like, to draw them i'm so telling maybe, you like, yeah like maybe that's why like i've ended up trying to like figures and you know yeah. create yeah. like portraits but you know i really like the human form so i would that's always right. try to draw them and in my year one i used okay. to draw and make money from it i remember wow. i made so much money to buy my own sandals um are you, you serious know, yes like a, 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 in class one in ghana i made money wow. from us and my mom was so proud of me that wow it's like like how do you like <laughs> you know make money from so you this did, you've been an entrepreneur from a very young age I, exactly because like i was drawing this shaka the world for you know like my fellow <laughs> this in case and they would use it for their evening um like shows wow. yeah so like i would do it they would go and cut it out you That's know right. like and use it for yeah and so like i made so much I... money exactly yeah, yeah, exactly so yeah, i think yeah. that had quite a lot of influence in me line you know uh, like liking um like the human figure because oh, i think um, like if you see all my works I, I, you know, I tend to, you know, like it tends to have, you know, like a subject tends to have, uh, uh, like to be, um, like, you know, like a human, a human form. form. Yeah. That's so right. it could be portrait, it could be like a story or it could be something, but you would, you know, see the human form in, you know, like in some sort of, um, I would say like in an action pose or like something like that, you know, I guess maybe That's you can it. track it back to the Bollywood like movies as well. Like when I was Bollywood up. movies <laughs> back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. So, Shaman, if you can hear us and if your connection is great, I want to ask to just delve a bit into your background when you were growing up, where you grew up, and the influence it had on your art at the moment. Can you hear us, Shaman? Okay, great. So Shalman's connection is not great, and we will be I'll be calling him so that from time to time he will actually speak rather than us. My connection to is not connection is not good. But when we can hear you, um, you can still speak. We we hear you when you speak. So tell us a bit about your childhood experience and the influence it had on your art. Right, I don't think his connection is still good. Mm -hmm. I'll call him on the mobile phone and then get him to speak um, so that we can actually hear him. Because it will be good for us to know from his I'm perspective for his um, childhood wow, dude. experience. Uh, Simon, I'm going to call you on the phone as we did last week so that you can actually talk us through. Hi, Shaman. So whilst you connect, um, yeah. the question was, how did your childhood experience um, influence your work? Okay. Um, my childhood experience obviously had a lot of influence in, uh, in so many ways. Because first, I think it shows in my, uh, it shows in my, uh, the, way I, the way I express myself using colors. Yes. Was that's right? Yes. That's right. Yes. That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. That's right. So 
Ok. Definitely. Yeah. Mm, mm. Okay. Right. Okay. I will be showing that today. And I think whilst you're on, let me show it um, because you can talk about it a bit more. But before you do so, there's a question from one of our viewers. And I'd like to actually show that question. It's from a senior of mine from Prempe College. His name is Kweku Ayapa Deborah. And Kweku says, what is your motivating factor that drives you to still continue in the art industry where there is keen competition? What actually keeps you in there? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Mark. That's right. That's right. Mm. Mm. that's true so one thing that you said that resonated with me was the fact that african colors you know the color palette is totally different from those that live in the amazon forest for instance and we as africans should be so bold to stick to what we know or what works for us and not copy bl blindly now yes and that really that's right that really resonates with me Okay. Yes. That's right. That that is a very powerful question, the statement that you've made there. What about my color theory? Because this world has been created in such a way that everybody has something to offer. What are the Africans also offering? And are we able to stand by what we offer to this world? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Of the inner self. That's right. That's it. That is so powerful. That's so powerful. And I'm, I'm going to add something small to what you've said. Now, way back in the 1900s, you know, we had African art influence a lot of the European artists. People like Pablo Picasso, Henry Matisse, they had to travel to Africa to learn our form of art yeah. because it was so different to what the conventional ways of doing things were. Now, our exactly. African art is more spiritual. As you said, if you don't feel it, 
you won't put it out there because it's a bit of your soul that you're giving out there. As artists, everything that we do is from within. So if African art was so powerful to influence the lives of public Picasso, Henry Matisse, and a lot more people, how come the artists of today are not confident to showcase the Africanness in their work? And they are copying blindly all over the world. Maybe it might be commercial, for commercial purposes, but you can tell me more about it. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes, it's too calculated. But Sh Sherman, can I can I stop you there? Because um, some of the audience cannot hear your voice properly. So I would advise that you join the main platform again, back okay. into the studio, and then we'll carry on with this conversation whilst I let Richard pick it up from here. All right. All right then. So I'll speak to you soon. So Richard, we started off with the fact that as Africans, we should be confident in, let's say, our color palette, our form, the way we do things, what have you got to add to it? Um, I think it is absolutely true that we have to stay true to um, like our colors. I, I always say that our work and art is like unique, is influenced by our culture, is you know like influenced by our like heritage. So um, to me, there is you know like you know as you know African black you know um, I'm like artists, we should stay true to our like roots um but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't learn good practices from you know um other um um, um like cultures or like you know like other um, um like the western like way like of like doing that you know like we should pick the good practices but again like you know like we should, like we can stay true to um our like african way of doing things of painting um but at the same time, you know, um, like learning from what um, the other, um, 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 other, 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 you know, like should I say communities or like people also um, um, paint. We can learn like some good things like from them. But again, like Definitely. we have to be like authentic and stay through to um, our way of like doing things. So the lesson here is that you learn, but you don't lose yourself in your learning process. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That, that is that, that is absolutely so Sh true. Sh Sharman is back. We like we would love to hear his voice. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, uh, yeah. I, I agree with what Richard just said. Um, Great. We learn. Great. We learn from. Uh, we learn from other cultures, other artists. Like as you said, Picasso learned okay. from. Uh, Picasso actually had yes. this African guy was that he's an African painter from Cuba that that he invited. Yes. yes. So he lived in Picasso for a bit. And that is how Picasso started learning the African That's right. sculpture. Yeah. Um it is it, just it's just um, and I think they even traveled to the north, they even traveled to the north of Africa to pick up some from the north of Africa as well. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, they did. If you if you if, yes. if you read into it. Uh, uh, but, but why did he? Why, why why did he have to? You know, Picasso said something that I um he said he said when he was eighteen, yeah, mm -hmm. he could he could draw he could draw he, could, he said he could draw a realism figure easily when he was eighteen with all the very and everything it was easy, but it took yes. him a whole life his whole life to be able to draw like a kid. That's right. Yeah, and what did he what he what he meant I believe was losing losing in uh, losing himself into into what what in, in, into the mind of a child and begin That's to it. put things down and they begin to paint things down more from his soul more than from a conceptual point of uh view the stuff he learned he learned in the book 
so, yeah, it's from the books. And then, uh, so I think there's something in there. There's something in there for us. It's, I think our childhood is so important. Talking about childhood, where yeah, you, where you pick, we pick up a lot of stuff unknowingly, and then, and then as we grew, as we, as we, as we, as we grow, we we sort of leave those behind and start going yeah. so much into what concept with the concept that has been put down. But I, I believe when we all follow when we all follow that path, what happens at what, what happens at the top is we all begin to look the same. True. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm let's say if you're drawing a figure, you measure into seven and a half spaces and all that. And it's so technical, isn't it? Yeah. So we are all trying to do certain things the same way. But then art goes yeah. beyond it goes beyond technicality. Art is to do with the spirit, the soul, your imagination faculty, and how you actually bring things yes. that are unseen into the known, into the seen world. Yeah, I, I, and I think for me, that's what I miss. I miss about art when um, I know when I, you know, Jean, uh, um, this black American artist that passed away, he was, uh, and, and Paul Kuhn, if you know Paul Kuhn from Yes, from yes, yes, I know Paul, yes. He, 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 yeah, he's childish. Yeah, the childish, the childishness and the originality he brings in his works is something that I'm, 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 I'm so drawn to. And understand? Um, we'll, yeah, but most of them, again, they learn all their concepts, they learn from other artists, they learn all the theories. But then, with the, but then, is is it gets to that time when they begin to lose lose themselves into into this beauty of of childhood. I call it childhood fantasy. When they begin to so I'm gonna I'm gonna show one of your works talking about childhood fantasies. Now this is something the one on the right hand side. That is brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us about it? Okay. Uh, I, I went. I went. I went back to to Ghana. Um, I think it was 2005. And then when I went, I think the main reason for me going was. I wanted to look for the the pictures and drawing I, I drawings I did when I was a child. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Hello. We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I couldn't find any of them. I think I I believe they were all thrown away. Right. So. Uh, so I go back. I decided to go back to that. Begin to and begin to do some pain like a child. I believe what I I believe. Time. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go back and do, you know, and uh, and um. Yeah, can you hear me? I'm not sure if anybody can. We hear can. Me. We can hear you. Car yeah. Carry on. We can hear you. Hello? We can hear you. Hello. Yeah, carry on. We can hear you. Eric, I think you need to put me back on. Okay. So. We can hear you, Salman. C carry on. Yeah. So um, doing these paintings, paintings of self of child, my piece, uh, I have Lulu, and uh, um, and the dog. I got Kwame and his dog it was a series I started, uh, and actually I've done recently. So he also looks up into that challenge. That challenge that happened to me, my, my experience. I wanted to put them in the corner, I want to paint them. I don't want to paint them like, um, like, like what an adult painter would, would do in terms of techniques and, and tones and color palette and all that. I just had to lose myself as a child and tell my story when I was a child. Some of the stories were not were were were, were, were not very uh, are not very pleasing, but I still want to tell them. And some of them are just very funny. So this is this one was one of those one of those species. 
That's me going out with my dog as usual. When, you, when I go out my the first dog is is to uh, is to, uh, <laughs> is to, is to do his thing on the floor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? So uh, I did a few of these, and I we were all quitted. Uh, and um, I mean that that's what encouraged me to uh, to go on and do more. That's right. That's right. So that that's amazing. That's amazing because. This work actually um, it shows the child in you, but it also frees you up to do what you want. Basically, it doesn't, it doesn't restrict you in your application of, let's say, color or form. or It just it lets you loose, and your imagination is at work. It's an, engaged here. So that, that's a really good one, when you actually let the child in you come, up, come out. Right, Richard, I'm going to move on to you because of Shalman's um, interference. But basically, we're talking about letting your imagination flow, letting the child in you come out as an artist. Um, there's something about children, the boldness in them when it comes to applying themselves. So when it comes to them just attacking, um, and when I say attacking, I mean the, the speed with which they just get to the canvas and paint anything. You yeah. know, when you grow up, there are certain restrictions. You start thinking about the end results and it's, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll be limited. Yep. So can you tell us about how artists should approach mm -hmm. their, their, their paintings or their creativity yeah. in relation I, to children? Yeah, I think um, that is um, a very, very good question to um, like explore. And I think it's something that is, um, I, would, I would urge everyone because um, like if I use myself as an example, um, I've always wanted to be, uh, you know, like to create or to invent things as yes. um, um, a child, you know, or mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm like growing up. So I see art as the avenue or as, you know, something that gives me the opportunity to like to do just that. You That's know, right. I can imagine and things and come up with things, you know, um, yes. uh, uh, in my head. So like I've always uh, like done that. I think when we grow up, our environment, the society, most of the time, like restrict our creativity. You That's know, true. like restrict the way that like we do things. You know, um, we start overthinking yes. and um, like trying to come up with things that society or the environment would like instead of creating something that is authentic, that is like within us, or limiting yes. how like we see things. You know, like usually, I think um, um, a man that I work with ask me like a question sometime, you know, you know, when like he learned that I was an artist, you know, okay. like he asked me a question. So Richard, can you paint me? Then I said, yes, of course I can paint. And he said, um, then I began like to look at him. Then he said, if you see me, what do you see? Like, what can you paint? Then I said, do you know what? If I see every day, I just see, you see like shapes. I see, uh, you know, like I see different, you know, I, I don't see like a white man, you know, like this guy was a white man. I see different shapes. That's how like I see um, like people, you know, so I see different colors. I don't see one uniform like color, but maybe like you can see me as a brown or like a black person. But you no, know, like whenever I see a person, I tend to maybe look at many things. I look at shade and, and I was telling you that like, if I'm going to paint you this, side is going to be green that side is going to be blue and all that and he said no 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 like it's not blue i said like that's what i see so like sometimes in order to you know um like in pleasing society and in pleasing what we expect the art world or people around us like or like we limit our creativity we limit what we see like in our brain we limit what i think we are intended like to create because yeah. we create something and say no 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 maybe the world like wouldn't like this let me smoothing That's it right. you know like let me make it perfect before like it goes out but like we need yes. to stay it, it it is it is it is like a difficult thing to do i think that like there was a time that like my wife like asked me when um she saw jean michel basque uh um, okay like yeah like when she saw her art and said ah, this is you know then i said you know what it is very difficult to really paint something authentic like this because 
your like your hands your brain yeah. wouldn't even allow you to print you know like to paint it's because the way that we've been conditioned from external forces if that is what you see that is what you paint but you know but because of the way that we've been conditioned and now it's not perfect it. you know let me just add a little more that a little more to create something that will be acceptable to the outside world you know so i think it's it is it is something that as yeah. artists as creative people or as creators we need to go back to what um our 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 original creativity you know like is which is you know yeah. painting us we create like in the brain because for me for me to paint That's anything right. i have to see it sometimes do you know what i have them you know like i see them like in dreams they have to you know oh, yeah. i i see them vividly on the canvas before it. it can be painted if i can't you, see it before you put I, it out there exactly i cannot <laughs> so <laughs> so the same, know, the same like thing happens to, to me yeah like we need to allow that th thing to grow, to grow. yeah yeah. And earlier, earlier on, when when we I started this conversation, I said yeah. that as artists, we paint from the soul. Yeah. Now, every artist cannot say that they are not visual human beings. Yeah. So even before you paint or sculpt or knit or do whatever, you've seen the end end result. Exactly. It's already there in your mind. You've already yeah. seen it before yeah. you started doing it. There are a yeah. few artists that say that okay, with my painting process, I'm just going to let it flow and make it up as I go along. Mm -hmm. Even with that, they know what they are going to do next. Yeah. yeah. You know, when they start and they apply the paint, they know exactly what color they are going to pick next. Yeah. So everything, hey, we've got a young artist here joining us. So that's our young youngest artist for this show. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that every artist needs to develop that imaginative faculty. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. best way to do it is to be that child. Like Richard's son, for instance. You mm -hmm. have to be that child yeah. and bring that child within you so you see he just walked in that yeah, is yeah. the child that we're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. not afraid of throwing yourself to the camera he doesn't care he's a child no, he he's yeah <laughs> that is that is what artists should bear in mind that it doesn't matter what you put out there to the world be your authentic self if you feel like today you're going to apply red and blue together do it don't say oh what will people think what or let's say uh people from my no, put yourself out there and for every artist there is someone out there that is willing to actually support what you're doing so we shouldn't be afraid at all so shaman can you hear us can you hear us shaman hi uh, shaman yes yeah can. good you can share you can hear us so basically, yeah. the next step is I'm going to show your, your work that you showed us. The first one was the one with the child. And the second painting on the left-hand side is a lady. Can you tell us a bit about that lady? Yes. Uh, this is my recent commission I did. Okay. And uh, it was... Um, uh, yeah, it's a painting of uh, an air hostess that lives in uh, that, that lives at he he lives at uh, she lives at Amsterdam. All and, right. Uh, she she's in town at the moment. I had a chat with yeah I had a chat with her um uh, yesterday. Okay. And she just she she just can't stop thanking me for the portrait. So <laughs> so what it, it was a surprise. Yeah, it, it, it was a surprise commission for. For, for her, for her. So what, what, what? It was a birthday. And what? She, what was that? Was I had about um, I had about twenty images of her. Okay. And out of the twenty images, I, I could tell, I could tell who she is, her character, the That's kind of right. person she is. Yeah. So this picture really does not exist. I put it. So I just took bits from those pictures and put it together. Oh. And I believe in this. this, this That's an interesting picture. one. That. Yeah, and then she she just she always says I was in just whenever she goes into the painting is she find the painting talking to it's like a a, um, a a carbon coffee copy of her soul that's what she calls it. That is really brilliant. Yeah, I mean and she she keeps she 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 said she didn't know. 
Yeah, this shit doesn't know how I do. But he, again, is uh, I think he's out of his and uh, doing. If you have, uh, I've been doing the um, portrait commissions for, for 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 some time now. So uh, yeah, I have a way of going about it to try and find the person's personality and try and capture it in the painting. So for those of you who'd like your so, portrait yeah. done by Charman, so his 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 Instagram is on there, and um, that's Charman Art at Shaman Art, if you actually type that into Instagram, he will come up and he will do a beautiful portrait painting of you. Um, as Shaman said, this one was pulled from bits of different, different pictures. But then the client said that you know, she's so pleased with this painting and therefore this is the power that artists bring to the table. This is what we can do. This is what we can do in terms of actually finding your soul within you and reflecting it in a painting. Well done, Shalman. That was a good one. Really good one. And I'm going to show the next one as well. There's another painting which I really like. And I've deliberately I've put your, your thinking profile on the left-hand side. But the painting on the right-hand side is so powerful. First of all, are you someone who wants to be, who likes to be alone most of the times? I'm just looking at the picture on the left-hand side. As an artist, do you like being a little alone? Yes. Um, I, yeah. Is uh, I don't know what I, I can't remember the term for for somebody who is an introvert and extrovert at the same time. Okay. I can't clearly clear remember. So um, I'm that person. <laughs> I'm that person who likes likes to be among people. I, I'm, I'm an extrovert. Yeah. I like to be. I, I like to be among people. And but then if I'm there, I always miss that part of me that is, mm. that i call uh an, int an introvert person so so i like every day i like to spend a few hours just by myself to think yes. to, that 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 brings me that brings me peace of mind and and uh i think for me that's the space in which i create so when i so when I'm out i just there, i just i just looked up on the internet and they said that the term for such a person is called ambivert <laughs> Ambivert is a person. Yes, Ambivert is a person who is an introvert and an extrovert at the same time. Yes, I am an ambivert. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's the first time I've heard so, about this um, word. In, in, oh, I I know, but I just couldn't remember it <laughs> because I was uh, I was trying to uh, again I was trying to research about myself you know that's right and to see if uh, because we only know about the two sides and i thought oh, because i did a test sometimes some some guy did a test okay. on me it's called the personality test right and the personality test was designed for you. yeah it was designed for you either to be you come out as an as a as a uh, an extrovert or an introvert right. but then at the end i couldn't fit into any of them wow i couldn't fit into any of any really on the side so then i thought there should be a time so i started research and i found this word yeah so so most so, having said that and i'm i'm, I'm just space, asking these questions in relation in the to the picture on the left hand side um most artists are people who most of the times in their creative process yeah. want to be left alone so that they can actually tap into the spirit realm and create so that's why i'm asking all these questions and i can yeah. see that in the picture on the left hand side um, you being in a very deep space of thinking. Yes. This is where I create. This is where I create. I do my sketches. This is, is that space, that space of silentness, that space of peace. I mean, the only thing I, 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 I would, in that space, I like to listen to nature, the sound of, the, the sound of nature. Right. Uh, the birds and, yeah, the birds and uh, the it, if it's the sea, the sea waves, the trees, the yes. music that comes, the trees, the bed. And for me, it gives me peace. That's it, right. it takes me out of this world, out of the, the, the hustle and bustle. And it puts me in a place, a, a, place of, uh, a, a, a place of peace, a place where I lose myself. And then That's it. And all this hustle and bustle, all the noise around. Yes. Silence. Uh, all the noise around. Just, just become silent around me. It vanishes. Yeah, that is when I yeah. begin to create. Yes. Yeah, I begin to. So do talking about creativity. Stuff. So the, yeah. the painting that you're showing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I was going to ask about the picture that I showed you on the right-hand yeah. side. The painting, on Powerful the, one. The, the painting on the screen. Yeah, the, yeah, the painting on the screen is called Mart. So um, when, when you look up Mart, uh, I we believe, we Africans, I don't know, I'm by... Uh, by um, when it comes to tradition, in terms yes. of in Ghana, I'm I'm region. I'm okay. okay. And then uh, um, when you read when you read the history of Elwes, I don't know the history about all the other tribes, but right. our history as Elwes goes all the way back all the way back to the Nile Valley. Okay. Our story our story have been traced. To, from thousands and thousands of years back, right. So yeah, the now and the and Egyptian we, now. So we were part. Of, yeah, the Egyptian now. We were part of of the of the now now civilization. Right, right, okay. And then we and then we moved with time. We moved and settled at and settled at uh, I think Mali, which is now the, the that part is that part was before Senegal. I think there was a there was there was a change of. Uh, um demarcation i think the demarcation has changed but then we moved until we settled finally settled in in um uh, in part of nigeria and That's then it. finally we moved to um we moved to benin and and from benin we belong we had a king of Nagopoli who was a wicked in and finally we broke away from from uh from from his reign and then we, we moved all the way to the Volta region. Oh, yeah. okay. So okay. I okay. believe most of us, not just there, but most, most of us, came, yeah, most of us came all the way down from, we are all, we are part of the African, the African civilization, the first civilization on the planet. Yes. That happened around the Nile Valley. But then and the stories told about, the stories that we hear about the Nile the, the Nile Valley civilization mm -hmm. and the, the, the pictures in the pictures that goes with those stories the pictures, the pictures don't look like us it's true they don't the images don't look like us mm -hmm. they've been changed yeah so I started doing I started doing these paintings to, to portray what I believe they used to look like at the time right so Matt was a god yeah, Mart was um, a, a, a film goddess that was looked up to, and that was looked up to at the time of, at the time of the of the Egyptian uh, Egyptian civilization. And she, and um, Mart basically just means order, rule, okay. and uh, and all the all the good good stuff that that make a, a, a kingdom. Um, that, that 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 make a kingdom a good kingdom in, in back in the days where they obey, they obey back in the, the days they, they, they obey the rules of their leader yes yeah so um this is my interpretation of what the goddess Mart looked like that that is so powerful that's so powerful i like i like it i like the um the powerful figure overbearing the egyptian uh what's it called the pyramids yeah. Yes, yes. And as you said, yeah. it's a god of order. And you can tell everything is orderly, uh, orderly, uh, uh, actually arranged in the piece. So that looks really good. So well done with that one. I'm going to bring Richard back on board. Richard, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, Richard has been in the background, has been quiet for a while. But I'm, I'm going to ask Richard. Um, we showed bits of your pieces last week. But one that I'm going to pick on today is this one. And I want you to talk about the Yasantua one on the left-hand side, because this one I think is currently shown, isn't it? Yes, um, the, now it was the Yasantua one was shown, um, I think about two weeks ago, um, okay. in an, a gallery like in London. So that was shown there. So um, if I have to just talk a little bit about that, the like the piece, um, I think. It was at the beginning of the year, or I think, and the first half, of the, like the first quarter of the year, I began right. to think about, you know, how we can 
really tell the Ghanaian story. It was, you know, I started as, you know, like a Ghanaian story, looking for a good Ghanaian story, like to tell. Then I yeah. began to like research about things that, you know, um, like our history, our culture, things that, you know, we should, or the world like should know about Ghana, that maybe the world really doesn't know the, like the whole story because of the way uh -huh. that they've been depicted like in paintings and in like history. Um, then Yasantra came to mind, like when I was um, at, like researching, then I thought, wow, let me just learn and read more because I think like I read something about Yasantua. It was taught in school when I was growing up, but it wasn't really deep. It was just, you know, um, one lesson, like you go through it and that is it. But meanwhile, like I think like we spent quite a lot of time um, learning about um, Western figures and um, Portuguese. Do, exactly like Portuguese, like who came to Ghana, settled in Ghana, conquered Ghana and all that. So the, like the story of Yasanto was to me very, very intriguing. That mm. what really motivated um, a woman, a queen mother, to yeah. lead um, more or less, um, um, uh, like you know, like in today's um, like language, I think it would be called uh, like a rebellion, you know, against a powerful um, colonial um, like masters. The British at the time were. The most powerful like country um in the world you know they were even bigger than uh, like america they, yes like they had all the military power and 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 I, and I was just wondering what really motivated a woman to do that whilst i was mm. like researching and asking myself that question i really couldn't find any painting which i can relate to that really captures or that really brings out the courage the leadership yes. the inspiration of that woman so I said, do you know what? Every country has got a painting that shows, how, you know, um, them being victorious. Um, That's um, true. Uh, um, um, like in war, like it shows some of their battles. It shows some of their, like, you know, like victories. It shows some of the key people that fought, you know, like for their people. But I couldn't find any painting that, or any picture or any painting that really, did, uh, like, uh, like depicted um the yasan tour war especially mm. the last one which was i think the fifth anglo ashanti wars or something like that i think yeah. um it's called that so i said i'm going to capture something that would do that job so i kind of um based on what i read and the figures and the way that the story went and everything i based this one i composed this uh, like image based okay. on like many things you know you've got in the background uh, on the left, top left, like hand side, um, yeah. you could see the an image of a building. Um, there is a little bit of smoke um, around it. That was a building, the the original Mencia Palace that was, you know, burnt. I think, but you know, up until the day that I found out, you know, through like my research, I didn't even know that there was um, a really an nice, one. yeah, a really nice, uh, you know, like Mencia, uh, you know, palace that was burned down by the British. And this one was really, really nice. To me, it looks better than the um uh, the like the Mencia Palace that like we've got now. I, I really mm. felt uh, like in love with it. And I said, you know what? I would reference that palace. Then mm. there is the like Ashanti flag. Then um the war or the like rebellion was mainly about the golden Sioux. Um the then British um like governor coming to the like Ashanti kingdom to ask for the golden to like to sit on and the British like refusing um the kings and the men most of them like had been like exiled so um the like the remaining kings were afraid to even say anything that really motivated or led Yasantua to stand up to say if the men are not going to fight she's going to lead that like rebellion and that really motivated um you know like the people around including like the men to really pick uh, you know uh up like arms to lead that rebel uh, like you know like to rebel against mm. um like the british so it's it, you know like it captures uh, like many things the good is to mix um it's like reference uh like in there then like you've got um our warriors uh like close like that they were uh, like uh uh like uh, like they were when um you know um in war they've all been captured most of the like rifles that like you could see are the historic ones that were used by the ashantis um, um like in war so i wanted something that depicted you know um the coming together of the ashantis and the british 
colonials um, um, at the time. And I think that was the image that like I came up with. The image is slightly based on um, the the one that was created by Eugene Delacroix. We, okay. I think who was um, like French um, 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 artist. But this one, I think, is based more on the research that I did, you know, yeah. regarding the Golden to War or the Yasan to War. Um, it, 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 it's to me, it's like depicts, you know, um, her leadership, her courage, you know, yeah. like an vision and, you know, like mm -hmm. it serves as uh, like an inspiration, like to myself. And I think that when it painted, I was a little bit hesitant, you know, in showing mm -hmm. it um, out because of, you know, um, the violence that it's like depicts. It depicts, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, but again, you know, um, it's happened, so like it has to be shown one way or the other. Right. But um, again, like when like it was shown, it's been like received quite well. Um, on the I've had so many like inquiries um about that, uh, from America, from the UK, even now that uh, like we're talking about thirty minutes ago, like I received um, um, like a message from someone from you know I think in um like Phoenix, you know. Wow. They, saying that like they wanted like to buy it you know and uh, like, that's amazing would, yeah, that's amazing yeah, uh, chat with me so i mean this this is the power that we have got as artists yeah and this event happened from march to september of the 1900 yes way back in 1900 yeah now we we were not even born we yeah. were not even thought of i don't think our parents were born at that time but uh, you have come into this world through the power of your imagination you've been able to research and capture that moment yeah. And now Ghana can have an image to to also tell the rest of the world that this is what happened. Yeah. And pictorially, an artist has been able, like Richard, has been able to capture this story. And we are now telling the rest of the world. Yeah. When you go to the Natural History Museum, for instance, yeah. when you go to all these big museums around the world, yeah. the Western world have been able, or the artists of the Western world have been able to capture their stories. Yes. Even, even slave trade. Yeah. You know, there are artist sketches and paintings of how they were packed on the ship. Yeah. If yeah. no artist captured it, we wouldn't have known. Exactly. So I'm encouraging artists out there that this is our time. Yeah. We have to tell our story. We have to capture our moment. Mm -hmm. How do people, let's say, live in Ghana at the moment? When you go to the marketplace, how do you see people arrange their food stuff? Yeah. Capture it. Yeah. You know, how do we plait our hair? How do the women gather to, let's say, fetch water? Yeah. Or what, how do we do our things as Africans? As artists, it's our job to capture them. So that yeah. for years to come, 100 years later, they will be able to tell our story that this yeah. is how we used to, let's say, dress up. This yeah. is how we used to uh, conduct ourselves in society. Yeah. So your work has been beautifully captured. And I like the fact that you did your research and you, yeah. you did an exquisite job on this one. Yeah. Well done, yeah. Richard. Thank you. There's, there's a comment from Mirel. Mirel, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, he says that the last painting definitely has a Delac <laughs> Delacroix. This yeah. is a French word, isn't it? Yeah, that is, uh, that is the like, artist that like, I was talking about. Good. Yeah, Eugene Good. Uh, Delacroix. Yes. It has that touch. Beautiful inspiration, powerful interpretation. So that's a feedback from Mirel. Mirel, thanks a lot. Mirel is a good friend of mine. And... In future, she'll be broadcasting all our, 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 our all our work on the podcast, yeah. um, so that we spread the message far and wide. So thanks, Morel. And basically, our work, and I'm going to show one of 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 uh, Shaman's as well. Last week he showed it, but I want to show it again. It's all to do with the power of the African. The one on the right hand side, Shaman is talking about what? Did you say they were called the protectors? Um, yeah, protectors of the throne. Protectors of the throne. Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Yeah. Um, the painting, yeah. The painting on the right, I call protectors of the throne, is is what I believe African warriors, what we would do within our power, within our, within our, we do not our capacity to protect what we have, and um, and as I said, this painting, as you can see, the figures, the warriors in these paintings are not doing anything. Okay. They just standing tall. 
That's right. But just just for the mere fact that they are together, it looks yeah that it looks really good. That's and so so much power, isn't power, it? Without power, without any action. You can see that they are exerting some power and authority over the viewer, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. And it's all about protecting, protecting what we have. Our culture stands together. And we, when once we, we, once we start together and we stand strong, it becomes really, really difficult for people to just break to the other people to break and lose when before the, uh, the, the, the europeans arrived at our shores we had a whole kingdom we yes. had armies we have generals we had we, we had people that protect us they protect the throne so that was the idea i had again i painted all this for imagine it's an idea i had from from what I believe, as you said, as you said, going to and painting and uh, 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 giving the world an accurate what I believe was yeah. in the past. So these 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 guys are protecting their throne. That's it. And even without doing anything, it just looks impossible for you to break them apart. That's right. So yeah. that, that that's so, another. Uh, Another it powerful is, message that the, you conveyed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, the, as, as you said, this goes all the way, um, if, or should I say, it comes all the way to the present time where I would That's say it. we need to protect, we need to look out for each other, we need to protect ourselves, we need to stand together. Because when we are together and we preserve ourselves, we preserve our culture, we learn from other cultures, but we shouldn't throw away everything that we have. Definitely. That will go a long way. It will go a long way to help us as a people. Because if we, if we, the oldest species on earth, in terms of yes. use, we should have a lot more history, a lot more stories to tell than other that's races, it. if that's true. Because, but at the moment, I think we're losing it all, and I just want to. I just want us to stand together and begin yes. to protect what we already have, and then stand stand together as one. When we stand together as one, we don't even need to fight. That's true. That's true. We don't even. And need that's to fight. exactly 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 yes. what you've depicted. And I'm going to show the painting once more. When we stand together as one, yeah. we don't need to fight. We just need to stand tall be confident and and be ready and be ready all yeah. these guys are ready in their combat mode they are not doing anything but they are protecting their throne basically i like that when we stand yeah. together as one yes, we don't need to fight but we will be able to communicate you our message need... very strong yes thank you that's what it is yeah that is a powerful one that's a powerful one <laughs> so richard yeah great as artists, I'm going to start rounding off, but as artists, and this is a, a general question for all of us, we know that we all go through challenges, especially those in Africa, when it comes to material, you know, material to paint and to create. What should we do about it as African artists to make sure that we have the right material to be able to create the things that we want to create? Because when it comes to the Western world, things are so available. I remember when I first came here and I went to my first art shop, I wanted to sleep there because I found, you know, there were so many things, paint brushes, paint, pastel, whatever I wanted, gouache, watercolor, I was spoiled for choice. But in Africa, it's not the same. I mean, you, you find, let's say, one shop in Accra, Acrylics, which is dominating the whole art market world in terms of material in, in Ghana. What should we do as artists? To make sure that we have the right material to create our work. I think and it's uh, yeah. Um, to me, I think it is. Um, I would see it as a gap in the market for entrepreneurs to take it on. It is. It is a very very simple challenge that um, anybody watching the show, you know, not realizes that there is a market. 
you know, there is um, there is a shortage of um, art shops in Ghana. Right. So right. if you've got any money, like you're thinking of to sell like anything, um, like in Ghana, I think yes. there you are, you've got an, uh, an like opportunity to really tap yeah. into that. I, I think it is something that we've not really like explored quite a lot. And it is quite sad because I can remember when I was um, growing up in Ghana, because I really do, you know, love art. Um, the only place that I could buy the basic, the, you know, like watercolor. And yeah. I, I don't really think I even saw like oil paint was um, University of Science and Technology's um, bookshop. So okay. I would walk miles um, like to this place and get myself um, this um, basic like watercolor. And that was wow. the only place, that was the only place, you know, um, uh, like in Kumasi that I could get you know your material to work yeah, with yeah so i think i would say it is it is a challenge to all like entrepreneurs like out there that you know art you know art is now rising it is booming like it is it is it is like i, I can see more creative people i can see more people like doing that so there is okay. a gap in the market for entrepreneurs to step in and provide materials for like artists to That's true. to use to buy and to develop like their talent. Great, great. That, that that's a great answer, Shalman. Mm. What's your answer to that one? Um. Yes, uh, at at materials can be pricey. Okay. Uh, and uh, depending on. Uh, yeah, the materials. Uh, and again, I believe a lot out there we can create with. We, we mm -hmm. can create. We can create with. We don't. We don't necessarily have to create art using uh, using the the so-called norm materials, material unknown to us, like uh, okay. oil colors, um, acrylic stuff. We can create art through our to uh to um stuff we see around us yes true stuff we see around us and uh, and i think that actually makes us unique so mm -hmm. as you said the last time um I, as you, uh, last week we asked me yes. about how i create some of my work and i told you about using a uh, core card an old core card, a brick oh yes devices, and using the branches the reason why I did that, the effect the effect I wanted, okay, the question I want, want, wanted people to ask me was exactly what I expected, yeah. because the question was, how did you apply the paint? We can't see any brush stroke. That's true. I was getting this from people who who, who could see my my paint my my, my paintings at as close range. So they okay. can't see any brush stroke. What did you do? I create a beautiful achieve mystery. That. So you are breaking away from the norm yes. and creating some creating something that becomes style and something people are not used to. So I think there mm. is an advantage and disadvantage of not having all the material available. That makes you that makes you wanna if you are that makes you wanna use other other stuff around you to create art. Right. I understand. So because that's, that's, that's because um, the invention yeah. is the mother. Because of as, as, as the saying goes, invention is the mother of uh, necessity. Uh, necessity is the mother <laughs> of invention. Of, of invention, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So basically, um, yeah, there's a see? question from a fear, a fear Pokua. And a fear Pokua is saying that yeah, she a, cannot yeah. believe, she cannot believe that we don't have these markets for these paints in Ghana. Yeah. Um, can I can I just add a little bit to what Shaman was saying? Um, and thank you, you very you much. Can, when, yeah. when we finish, we'll go back and answer a few. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I was going to, um, like in adding to Shaman, I think I was going to address like a few uh, Great. Uh, my question okay. as well. So thank you very much, um, like Ifia, for your question. So what Shaman said is very very true. Um, necessity, like, is the mother, like, of, of like invention. We do have yeah. to use sometimes the the materials that like we have to create like art the fact that we don't have quality like oil paints acrylic watercolor doesn't mean that we don't have to create 
our creativity. We can That's use right. anything to create, but sometimes it is really good if we can compete with, um, you know, you know, the rest of like, the world. like the rest of the world with quality. Because one thing that you know, like in your experience, like when you came here and said, like you went to uh, like an art shop, like you wanted to sleep there. It was I wanted the same to sleep thing, there. You know? I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. Like, like when I first entered, I said, "Wow, I never knew this like existed." So yeah, I think it is it is quite shocking that we still do not have this market developed like in Ghana. And mm. I, I I share I think um, a fierce um i'm um, like this believe that this you know like we don't have markets you know like yeah. for this i think now they are beginning to spring up but we need more in there you know um uh, like in the spaces that like we've got like in ghana we need yeah. more of these suppliers to be you know to be made like available so that those who are you know starting those um our children or our ne nieces nephews who are in ghana who want to explore who wants to you know go into the creative uh, like industry can can have something to like experiment you know if you've right. got choice then you, like, you know like you can experiment you can play with it you know and, and and once like we have many more people entering the market it will it will start to become like affordable like as well the prices will start coming down there will be competition for um to bring quality like materials like on stuff for you know at is like experiment and when you don't have many things to like experiment with it kills the creativity within you so like That's once great. you've got more choices you, you know like i walk like into a shop you know there is um a, a 3d painting that like i created and okay. you know i never thought i would create like anything like that i went into like an art shop i was just picking stuff and I came home and I created it. I did it. An, um, 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 a sculpture. I went to like an art shop, just picked things and experimented. So, yeah. you know, like we need people to fill the, um, you know, like to come uh, no. uh, like into the market. So thank you very much, um, like Afia for um, the question. And uh, Afia, just to add more to what Richard and Shalman has said, um, we do have a few shops in, in Ghana and in Accra, I know of acrylics, I know of uh, one or two shops there where you can get your materials. But as Richard and Shalman are both saying, there are not a lot more choices for you to pick from. So as, as Richard said, it's a very creative, uh, imaginative endeavor. You should be able to try and try and fail so many times yeah. so that you find your special niche. Art is a language and, and your language should be unique from one another. Because it's like your DNA, your thumbprint. Yeah. Yours is totally different from the other person. But without playing so much and failing so much so that you can learn from it to form your unique language, uh, you'll be limited in the things that you can do. So if you have art materials all around us so that you can pick and choose what we want to choose, whether acrylic, whether oil, whether gouache, whether with a color, mm. anything at all, then there will be that abundance to help us create whatever we feel like creating. The second thing that I would like to say is that because art materials are quite expensive because of the, the amount of shops that are there, artists do not use quality material yeah. because they can't really afford it, you know? And the, second, the third thing is that people do not patronize the artworks that they paint, the artists paint, because they don't see the quality that they want to see in them. And therefore, people do not buy their work. So it's like um, a chicken and egg situation. Yeah. People do not buy the artworks. Artists do not have the money to buy the material. And yeah. then the materials are not in abundance. Yeah. So we are limiting ourselves in the African art market. So our, our encouragement or our proposal, so to speak, is that entrepreneurs should enter into that space, provide a lot of work, beat down the monopoly within the art material yeah. market, so that a lot more artists will be able to afford the materials to create as they wish, whenever yeah. they want. In so doing, the quality of our artwork will go high because we will form our individual artistic languages yeah. and then we'll come up with quality, beautiful pieces which entrepreneurs or collectors would also buy. This will raise the game in the, in the African market. Yeah. So that, that that's where we're starting with that. That is absolutely true. That's right. That's right. Right, so moving on to uh, challenges, I'd like to also talk about the selling of artworks, and we'll be ending with this uh, uh, with this topic. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that we face as, let's say, artists in the diaspora compared to artists in the African market? 
Is this something that we've talked about? Someone, do you is want to any, Is there any difference in the challenges that we in the diaspora as art African artists face to those in African on the African continent? Um. I'll, okay. Uh, let Shaman go first. I'll, I'll... Go for it, Shaman. I hope it's still good. I, I hope it's still going on well because. Um, yeah, we can still hear you. It's still going on well. So the question was <laughs> Is there any difference between us as artists in, in the diaspora compared to artists in Africa um, when we enter the arts market and we want to sell our pieces? Are the challenges the same or is there any difference? That's a very good question because um, the reason why I'm saying it's a good question, I'm not just saying it because people say it and because uh, <laughs> I was talking to a couple of a uh, few, <laughs> I, I'm, I, was talking a couple of I'm, I was talking to a couple of uh, art buyers some time ago and I wanted to know whether they would prefer to buy art from from a, they would prefer to buy art from an uh, an art from Africa or an, or an African artist living abroad. That's right. Now, yeah, one said he 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 would buy from an African artist living living in Africa because he believes he he's uh, he's what he's painting is more pure. Okay. It's okay. more pure and okay. more from the motherland. Right. And then, 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 the, other, the, the, the other person I spoke to said it doesn't matter who paints it, whether the person is from Ghana or from or, or lives in England. He yeah. when he's when he sees African art and he likes it, he buys it. Yeah. And then I spoke to somebody else who also said was just said um um uh, the painting should be from from the soul it doesn't matter who okay it, whether it's a white person or a black person is an african artist if it's, it's african art probably for example if one was born on the continent and africa and yes. grew up there and and, and paints he is still also considered he's still also considered an african artist That's understand right. so um there's different, there's different, there's different school of school of thought when it comes to school this. of thoughts. I think for me personally, I think at the end of the day, yeah, at the end of the day, for me personally, I think it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter where you are when when you create your art because if you watch some of the black artists that live in UK have moved and they live in Trinidad, right. like Chris Ofoli. Oh yes, and yeah, they've moved away from here. Yeah, I think. I think it doesn't matter where you are. The most important thing is how how true to you, you are to your creative, and how how you 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 get the world to appreciate and buy into what you do. For me, I That's think right. that is the most important thing. Okay, well, well done. I think that you've mm -hmm. you've answered it very perfectly well, and um, I'm going to Richard at this time. Richard, what do you think about the difference in, let's say, um, us artists in the diaspora compared to those in Africa in terms of our ability to sell our work um, where, wherever we create it, whether we create it back home or we create it in the diaspora? What are the challenges, number one? What are the advantages, number two? And do we have any differences? Okay, I would I would make it very very short. I'll pick on the first like advantage, the okay. advantage or the, the, you know like how what I would see as like advantage is that those of us within the you know like in the diaspora have got um, different like platforms you know and I think is we can sometimes I I would say you know we can easily put our work in front of more the international um um you know like showcase our work um to international like audience a little okay. bit is 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 uh, like it, it it is it is it is a little bit easier 
for us mm. to do that than for someone like in Ghana creating to get that right. you know um chance to you know like showcase because you know um, like when it came to like the UK, there are many ways where you can go about it, getting your work displayed or getting your work in front of the right like audience. So I okay. think that is the slight um, like advantage that um, like we've got. I think um, one of the things that is um, like the challenges that we face um, as well is that why um, I'm at in the diaspora or within like the Western world is is, is white dominated um it is just yeah. like recently that there is some um, uh, like a renaissance of you know african art you know african art you know has come it's it's, it's becoming more like recognized now and people are nice. really looking you know for um um african art but it has been dominated or white dominated so it is very very difficult to push you out there um, especially when you call it like African. That is why I think yeah. a lot of African artists tried to copy the Western, uh, you know, way of, wow. you know, painting uh -oh. or art mm -hmm. without, you know, more or less like shying away from what, you know, or, 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 or from their like origin or not yeah. becoming like authentic or, 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 yeah, or, or, yeah um, exactly. So I think for us, it is difficult because it's white dominated, it's difficult getting it out there. And I think the challenge for those in Ghana, I'm just saying this one, no, uh, like slightly from my limited like experience in Ghana, um, um, in that, I think I can see it that uh, in that, I think is the appreciation and affordability plays like a key role. I know everybody yes. likes that, but when it comes to paying money affordability. for it, yeah, like in Ghana, are they willing to pay money for? And one thing that really saddens me, like when I see that um, on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram is that the people that can afford to pay for the ads do get it mm. for free in Ghana. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and you realize that and people, I, you seen, know, artists... I'm not, not because, you know, I've, seen, yeah. I've seen a lot of these people yeah. who will get their portraits made for them because of their status in society. Exactly. You, People are trying to please them rather than exactly. let them appreciate the art and buy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, and, carry, carry, and, carry on. I'll, yeah, I'll add more and, to it. yeah, and I think that you know, like any time that I see things like that, it really saddens me that why do you? Because uh, you know, I don't know like any of this like artists like personally, but you could see some of them that come on. There is, um, you know, like like like, like, like they could do with some few uh, like cities, but they are giving That's this right. art to these celebrities who can afford it so yes. i think someone asked me like a question like some time ago that would you do a similar one for any um celebrity the question that i ask is that will satawale or stone boy do their yeah. music and give it to for me free. for free and i said if they wouldn't do that then i wouldn't do that even though when i do something for them it would maybe give me like a new your image, uh, your, your, yeah your image but you know like but, visibility. You know, but sometimes i think that artists in ghana don't do them just like don't do themselves like justice they undersell like themselves you know so yes. maybe i think that is like a challenge that is like education that is something that it can and the so-called celebrities in ghana should also help them out you know give them right. the right platform give them the right if someone is created something that you really like please spend money on it don't just and, take and, it for free because you are a celebrity you are robbing them you know <laughs> that's true. So, i mean so, you, you, you you've answered it perfectly because i'm glad you mentioned the celebrities in this in this yeah. um in this discussion because yeah. as visual artists we also play a very important role in society yeah. The only when you talk about creative arts, a lot of yeah. people just see musicians, musicians and entertainers and all that, yeah. but they don't see the visual arts well. No. No. So I was very glad when, let's say, um, the mayor of Accra, for instance, yeah. employed a lot of artists to to do, let's say, graffiti on road, good yeah. ones, really good ones, people like Mo Ibrahim and uh, and um, Mo Mo uh, the artist and his yeah. whole team, and you have Patrick William Dodu yeah. and his whole team just helping to make Accra beautiful and it's yeah. called the beautification of Accra. when you look at the aqua aqua j interchange yeah. all the artworks that they put on there was brilliant so there's a little bit of education that needs to be had yeah. and i think it's happened it's happening gradually yeah. 
but we want more of it to happen in Ghana yeah. or in Africa as a continent as a whole. So our appeal is that those that can afford artwork, patronize it. Even if an artist is bringing it to you for free, give them a token. Yes. Because I believe that the reason why they go to these celebrities is because they want their ratings to go high. They want visibilities. So when they, let's say, give the picture to the celebrity and they take a picture with the celebrity, the intention is for them to be visible in the art world mm -hmm. or in the Ghanaian society yeah. so that people will patronize it. Yeah. So our, 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 our advice is that these people who can afford, afford these yeah. artworks yeah. should actually be proactive yeah. in approaching the artist to patronize their work. Yeah. Now, there's a question from Kweku Ayapa Debra who says, how do you market your art products? And what are the main channels of distributions that you use? Now, this is a question for all of us. So I, I, I will let Shalman start. Richard follows, and I'll add my, my view on this question. So Shalman, take it from here. Shalman, can you hear us? The question is, how do you market your art products? So how do you get your art products? And what are the... Yeah, I can hear you now very clearly. Okay. Ca ca carry on with the answer. Yeah. How do you market our art? Okay. Uh, in the UK, I think it depends on where you are. But... In the old, in the past, it was just all about galleries. Yes. And at the but at the moment, you have you have the biggest gallery, which is free for everyone, which is the internet. Yes. So uh, personally, I get a lot of commissions from uh, from from social media. Okay. So during the during this lockdown, I've done a few uh, few uh, portraits, all coming from Instagram. So right. that is uh, that, that that's one channel available to me, and then the the, the, the paintings you saw, the one the paintings you showed, yeah, um, Kwame and the dog. That's right. I sold the first three I did. I sold all the Facebook because I happened to. I just I don't know what happened in uh, uh, how um, so somehow some other some artists, a, a Ghanaian artist, Uso Kuma saw it in germany and then he wanted to to buy them and and uh, that's how the, 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 that's how i sold it okay so that's okay. that's so social media so that social media is now a strong a strong way of marketing your art which didn't used to be part of the channel in the past before it used to be only art galleries another way i market i market my artworks is through art fairs right art fairs so um yeah an art fairs and african events so i did uh, what i do with these events if i read about the event early i can i can yeah. take a, i can have a store and then and then uh, and then sell my art to uh, my my clients i think, I think right. it's, it's important to know clients are mm -hmm. to reach them yeah it's very important that's very important so i mainly got mainly social media yeah yeah great so for thank me, you thank you thank you shaman for that answer media. so shaman is saying at first uh, yes and we yeah I think. so shaman uses for those of you who do, who couldn't hear him he uses social media a lot and then he also engages in art first to sell his artworks so richard it's your turn now how yeah. do you market your art products and what are the main channels of distribution I think um, um, I've, it's, it's, it's exactly like what Shaman said, but I've got a website which um, I sell through. I saw quite, it's, um, um, I've more or less created it using like an e-commerce, you know, like platform. So it is, it, it's been really, really good. I just started it just like recently about three, four months ago, but it's been really, really, really helpful like for me. Um, social media is um, Instagram, Facebook, um, and the rest are also really, really good. I mm. get quite a lot of um, uh, like inquiries, um, you know, like on that, um, you know, like Instagram is, you know, I'm not like, in, uh, I'm on Instagram just for 
like at or not on Instagram for okay. anything. So, okay, have um, to show your work basically. Exactly, exactly. So like you hardly see my face in any of my you know <laughs> uh, 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 postings. Um, so I, I, it's, 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 it's purely um, uh, like for business, and it's been really, right. really, really good. And I think there are other channels um, that I, I don't think a lot of artists do consider, which mm. I would urge people to look into um, because initially. When when I started, I think two years ago, I started posting some few things there, and I was quite surprised when I had my uh, first um, like sale there, and I found okay. quite a lot of sale um, there. It's um, eBay and um, like Etsy. You know, I've got yeah. um, an account with um, Art Finder as well. That's but right. again, when people talk about you know platform like to sell your ads I, I don't think a lot of people do think about ebay but i think no. uh, to me one of the places that i've sold quite a lot of art is on ebay and i'm wow. you know i'm quite um like surprised by the success of that because i never thought anyone would go on ebay to look for art to buy art, okay. but yeah. i i do i do sell quite a lot on ebay um but right. now that i've got like my website and like other channels i'm beginning to sell more on my website than um, like anywhere else yes 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 that's great with myself and i'll add more it's no different mm -hmm. to what the two of you said and um, basically technology has made it very easy for us to reach anywhere in the world mm -hmm. so i use social media a lot social media being my my facebook page uh and my instagram account this is where i get a lot of clients from but the advice that i'll give is that be personable because people mm. don't want to just buy your artwork but they would like to know the artist behind the artwork yeah. so with all these social media um interactions it is best that you show let like, the process or sometimes have a video of yourself painting and then talking and saying hello to the people because this this will let you attract a lot of um customers because people don't just want to walk at a, a, a different commodity to let's say buying a shirt or a mass produced shoe or something art is very personable you know people buy it because it speaks to them so they would like to know why you painted what you painted so let's say when you do videos of you painting and interacting with the people answering their questions you find a lot more market coming your way and, and that's the advice I'd like to give all of us. I'm trying to add Shellman, but I think his screen is, is pitch black at the moment. Okay. But that is where we are. Um, basically, we are going to end the show, but what are your last words for, let's say, up and coming artists? Richard, take it from here, and I'll try and get Shellman to also say his last words. I think my um, last word or piece of advice I will give to every artist, um, you know whether like established or like up and coming you know like especially to um up and coming ones um keep at it it is you know um uh what i always say is that um the cream always like rises like to the top so okay. keep at it okay. practice i like that one yeah the practice. cream always what rises to the top yes like practice like practice 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 never never you know um, um like let anything dim your passion you know mm -hmm. keep practicing keep practicing um and once um like you keep practicing like you realize that you get better and your work will speak for itself your work will will, will like you know do the like the talking um on your behalf like you don't have to do it like uh, like the talking your work will eventually begin to speak you know like for you so um little advice please keep practicing never stop yeah yeah great shaman thank you thank you richard thank you so much shaman what are your last words that you like to give to an up and coming artist can you hear shaman Okay, so Shaman is having difficulty with a uh, uh, broadcast at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going um, to push. Yeah, Shaman, are you there? Never give up. Good. Can you hear me? Shaman says never give up. Carry on. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so your, your last words, you said never give up, isn't it? Yeah, never give up. Keep keep following your your passion, even great. Even if you don't, um, because I 
understand most at most. Never give up and keep and keep painting and keep painting, keep expressing yourself. Great, great, great. So thank you so much to yeah. Shalman and Richard. It's been fantastic having you yeah. on, on this I show. Understand, I understand most I have to do um, other jobs to make money. Okay, yes, yes, um, yes. But always, always find time for art. Great. So Shaman's advice is never give up, keep painting, and always find time for art, regardless of the circumstance in which you find yourself in. So thank you so, so much, Richard and Shaman. It's been a pleasure having you for two weeks, and this is not the end of it. We'll always find time to come back at some point to give our audience some more. So thank you so much, and I'm going to take you off screen uh, for now, but thank you for honoring the invite. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, listeners, thank you so much. We've had Richard Mensa and Shaman Kwashi, very good friends of mine who've joined us over the past two weeks to talk about their art. They also talked about their challenges. And then ultimately, they advised us on what we can do as up and coming artists so that we stay the course. Because art, as I said, is a calling. It's not something that you just pick and drop. But if it's a calling, it will always follow you. So thank you so much for joining me. I would like all of you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Eric Amwakwa Boedu. If you go to YouTube and you type in Eric Amwakwa Boedu, you can actually um, be able to subscribe to this channel. And it's been lovely coming your way. Thank you and have a blessed week. I'll be bringing someone important next week, even from the country of Ghana from the country of Ghana. So thank you so much. God bless you.